Mac uses the artist color wheel. Hi, my name is Miss Megan Robinson, and you may not know this, but I have worked for MAC for 13 years, and today I'm going to help you with foundation undertones and understanding the MAC color way. This video is not sponsored. It's literally just me passing on information to you guys so you have a better experience just navigating the makeup world. Exciting though, I do have my own discount code that's live from now until July 1st on the MAC Cosmetics Canada website, Miss Megan 15. Use that information however you see fit. I will walk you through how you can understand how to pick out your own shade and kind of what the shades mean. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a post. Let me know what your favorite foundation is. And if you'd like to understand MAC foundation undertones a little bit more, please keep on watching. MAC uses the color wheel to do their colors. There's obviously nuance to color. Orange, red, and then technically like pink would fall into this area too, is your NW side yellow into here is your nc side so when you're adding red into something you're adding warmth that's where that nw comes into play and when you're adding in coolness that's where the kind of bluey green is going to come into play it's just like the most minimal background knowledge that you need because there's easier ways to identify it and this is what i'm going to walk you through first things first just not even tricks, not even hacks, not even looking at veins, none of that stuff. When you look at yourself, do you have a more yellow, golden, olive complexion, or do you have a more rosy, pink, orange complexion? And that is taking just the average of looking at you. Because in some skin tones, you're, you have, especially in darker skin tones, there's sometimes like a red overtone and a golden undertone. Just generally speaking, which two categories do you sit in? You said yellow, gold, olive, you're an NC. And if you said, if you said pink, orange, red, you're in the NW. Then from there, when you are looking, they're just in a lineup, right? The numbers will range from five to 65 and that's your depth. So when you're staring at the unit yourself. Where do you see, what grouping do you see yourself in? Are you more in the light category, light medium, medium, dark, or deep going into the like 60, 50 to like 65? That's the depth. So now you've just narrowed it down. So you're like, I'm in this section here just visually by looking at the bottles. I think that I sit within this color range. This is why it's so important to shop makeup in stores. I don't care what brand or where it is. You need to be able to touch and feel and see and experience the product. Online, they are like the little circles and things. Those are like the closest Pantone swatch to the color. It's a computer generated color. It's never gonna be the same accuracy as seeing it in person. But the closest thing you get to online are the actual like arm swatches. In the Studio Fix lineup, for example, it's the widest shade range. So. It went from 65, well, it went from, I don't even know, maybe 55 shades originally to 65 to now 67 and in some markets, 71. So that now means that there's more nuance in between the shades as the numbers are going up. It's not just light to dark. It's not just adding more to make it deeper. There's subtleties in everything. I'm gonna use mine, for example. They'll sit like this on the unit, right? NC27, I'm pretty sure, was a shade extension at some point. It wasn't part of the original lineup. So the original lineup would have been like 20, C4, 25. Picture foundation starting as beige. Beige neutral. Okay? Kind of like drugstore foundations. Just beige. When you're adding yellow, green, blue into the color, you're getting NC or C. When you start with that beige and you're adding in pink, red, orange, you're getting the NW. So in a lineup, I'm all three of these shades, depending on how I want my skin to look. So the C4, and again, this is why it's so important to go in store because yes, there are descriptive words to explain a color, but sometimes you can just trust your eye more. The other part to this is that everybody sees color differently. You have to use how a brand does their coloring as like a guideline that's there to assist you. The beauty of the MAC undertones, and I've mentioned this before on TikTok, is that it allows you to build a better makeup look for yourself. And I explain that about me a little bit later. So they all started out as like a beige, right? This one is gonna fall on that more golden olive side. So the little bit more bluey green in it. 
When you go down to the NC25, it's a little bit more yellow. And then you go down here, it's a little bit more peach. All of these sit in that NC category. You can wear all of them. It's just how do you, like, how do you want your skin to look? If you're somebody, in it, and this is where you need to know what other things your products are going with, because if I wore a darker self tan, I might go into this. If I want to buff it out really, really sheer, I might go with this. But if I wore these two as a full coverage product, there's gonna be way, way, way too much like pigment and color to it and I can't do it. The way you swatch product is so important because you need to swatch it in the way that you're actually gonna wear it. Because if we go in, if you go in like this and you just do a full, yeah, see like I like this color too, a full color swatch like that, it's gonna be a lot different. The mass tone or like how opaque the color is, you're seeing the true undertone, right? So we're picking up more on that golden yellow when it's at full coverage versus when it's sheer. So I have to decide like, how am I wearing my foundation? Cause that's gonna affect the color that I pick. So if you're a full coverage person, swatch your foundations, full coverage. Don't buff them away to the point that you can't see them anymore because you're most likely not buffing them to that degree on your skin. This is the type of color, like I was mentioning, if I was gonna buff this out sheer, I'll really like it. Versus if I wore it like this, there's I'm seeing too much of that yellow color. Now, in that NC range, NCs will have blue and green pigment in them to neutralize them, especially in the deeper tones, to prevent them from going really, really red. However, when you get into especially NC 45, 46, 47, 50. Back in the day, there was only, it jumped from 45 to 50. And they had your traditional like golden tone to them. And then 46 and 47 were introduced and they have more red in them. And if you're looking at that in a lineup, it may seem like a little bit confusing, but for somebody who is in NW, so that warmer red side, the NW45 has such a rich red tone to it that when you put that on, like I had mentioned, if you have a, if you're a darker complexion and you have an overtone that's red and an undertone that's golden, the center of the face could have that really beautiful golden bright center, but the outsides of the face have that darker red tone. If you pick that darker red tone and stick with, let's say an NW45 and you cover that golden, the face is gonna look darker and that could be your vibe, that might not be your vibe. And you can't necessarily jump down in shades. So you actually switch undertones. So you're gonna go into the NC46, NC47, cause they're, it's identifying both tones that exist in the skin, but it's not sitting in that golden yellow. So it's not gonna make you go ashy. You could be an NC all winter long and then summer comes out and you tan and you tan to an NW because you're adding warmth into the skin. So a crossover sometimes that you'll see is like an NC35 going into like an NW40 because they get such an intense tan. You can't go just darker into the next ones over because the undertone has changed because you've added warmth, you've added redness. That's the basis of maneuvering through the colors. And it really, it's not anything to be challenged because it's, it's how the colors are made. It's how the colors are sorted. If you take away warm, cool, like those terms, you're just identifying peach, rose, yellow, golden, olive. Foundations need to dry down in order for you to see their color. You need to let skincare settle in um, and it needs to dry down to see the final shade. Think of it more like a liquid lipstick, not something oxidizing. Just because something gets dark does not mean it's oxidizing. So think about a liquid lipstick. When you put a liquid lipstick on, it looks like one color dries down to a different. It's the same way with foundations and depending on the level of skincare that's in them, that can affect how the dry down happens. But that's where you wanna judge the color. Everybody can wear multiple shades as well. There's no one shade for you because it depends on how you want your skin or your foundation to look. So for me, I like to self tan and I don't do it on my face. The foundation has to match my body. I also have to consider the fact that I love a lot of cream bronzer and I love a lot of bright concealer. So my color can sit a little bit more on the darker side 
to work with that. So if you're in a scenario where you're looking for a new foundation or you're looking for a new powder, whatever the case may be, you need to go into it understanding that the color needs to work with what it's being paired with versus on its own because that could be two entirely different shades for you. I'm going to use me as an example for this. I have a more olive undertone. I'm like the light medium olive and I prefer cool tone products on my skin as we know. So every eyeshadow I have on right now is a cool tone. The lip I have is a cool tone. And when you think of it from this perspective, that those cool undertones, so that blue, green, olive color already exists on my skin. When those shades, those eyeshadows, those blushes, those lip colors go on, they're sitting on something that it's related to. So it sits softer on my skin. It sits in the background as opposed to the forefront. If I was to go in and do the same makeup, but with warm tones, they still look good on my skin too, especially I have green eyes. So something in those that orange red category is going to also accentuate them. But because that warmth is opposite to the undertone of my skin, two things opposite each other, they enhance each other. So it sits a lot heavier for me. Like I see it more at the forefront. I see the product on my skin, not as soft as this kind of looks. So if you use MAC foundation undertones and build your makeup from there, that's how you get a more cohesive, a cohesive look. And that's how makeup is being done. And obviously you can wear whatever you want, but that's kind of the sciencey part the artistry and the science behind building a makeup look. Like even in my crease, I think I have a mix. What did I put? Cozy Gray, Sandstone, Omega. In the crease, and there's also printing carbon, but in the crease, it looks like the natural shadows that would be casted on my skin, where if I put a warm one, it would just become a very warm crease color. Sometimes when you put those cool tone shadows on your skin, it can look muddy it's sitting against warmth so it's accentuating them a little bit and you're seeing it's just not complementing the skin in the same way another thing to consider too and i had i this morning i answered this question on tiktok you're in the like fair category fair olive was specifically the scenario is the lighter the lighter that a color is the less dominant the undertone is right because you're dealing with such a fair shade no one's skin is green so in the makeup world green is sitting with the cool because it can't be warm sitting in the cool category it's not a neutral and it in the way that it would be like when you're like an art like an art when you're actually like painting the undertone is less present in your very fair or even very dark colors from there that's where it's it's hard for me to break down because i know how to get from like a to b really quick but like explaining it sometimes is a lot it's kind of like an equation so if i know that like let's say you are a fair olive complexion we don't want to go too heavy into the nc 17 18 because that's going to show too yellow on the skin but the nc 10 is going to be fair enough to sit properly on your skin tone still work within the coolness that your skin tone has but if it's missing that little kick of olive that's where the C powders come into play. C 30, 35, 40, 45. They look almost green in the container. And that's where you're going to tint that NC 10 with that little bit of olive and create that fair olive color for you. So I think that as a, like a beauty consumer and someone that's just like looking to buy their foundation, they're like, I'm not really into all of these things. Don't worry about whether you're warm or cool when you're picking your foundation just look at the color just look at the color that it is even broken down even more did you see yellow or do you see like pink and red pink and red and w n yellow golden and c when you go into it's as simple as picking up the bottles and going what looks like something i would like or what's the closest like i immediately know that i'm not gonna like how this sits on me in the way that I like to do my foundation. This is starting to look more like the bronzer on the outside of my skin. So most likely I'm gonna pick something like this, which is C4 and it's also what I wear on the serum foundation, but that doesn't always happen. Formulas can change the, the pigment. So you always need to rematch yourself if you're trying something um, new. 
In terms of color correcting the skin, in theory, hyperpigmentation has that purpley, bluish kind of color on the skin. If you have hyperpigmentation on your skin, at NW, that red, that warmth, is gonna color correct that area a lot faster. It's like the equivalent of putting down an orange color corrector a lot faster so that you don't have to do all that extra work. So now you have your you know red tone base down. Everything is color corrected, but you're like, I kind of lost the brightness to my skin. I wish I was like a little bit lighter. Um, I don't wanna be as flat as I look. I love that my hyperpigmentation is gone. That's where you cross undertones. So now we know that we need to brighten and bring back that undertone, bring in a little bit of golden. That's where you can put a darker NC powder on top of that because the two of them together neutralize. When you use two opposite undertones, they neutralize each other and you'll get a more seamless kind of color match than if you were to just take the two same shades and layer them together. If you take NC25 liquid and NC25 powder and you put them together, it's the equivalent of doing that swatch where you're creating that mass tone. You're just intensifying the same pigment and it could just look off. It's the easy option. It's easy to say like, yeah, I'll just wear both of them, but maybe go a little lighter in the powder. Maybe switch undertones, but those are the areas that you can experiment with. And that's why it's so important to be in store to touch and feel and see the product and see how it sits on the skin to understand what it is that you're actually looking for. So let's recap because I don't want to overcomplicate things for you, but I want to give you a guideline to help you able to find your color. So say it with me. Do I see yellow, gold, olive in my skin or do I see pink, red, orange? If you said the first one, NC neutral cool. So you can look at NCs, you can look at Cs. If you said the other, you can look at NWs and Ns. Second part that you're gonna do, where's the depth? Where do you see yourself? Look at multiple bottles. Do you see yourself in light, light, medium, medium, dark, deep, rich? We've narrowed it down to three bottles. Quite literally, pick up the three. Hold them up against your face. What looks like what you wanna look like? And you don't have to be an expert in it. You're just gonna look. But this is where you can start to pay attention to little things. Like what do you like about your foundation? What do you like about your skin? Where do you see yourself sitting? If you go, oh my God, this looks like it could be my bronzer shade. We know that that's probably too dark, but are you pairing it with lighter concealer? Are you pairing it with a lighter powder? You could probably eliminate one of them. Now we're down to two. It's like me in the summer. This looks like me in the winter. Maybe that's how you decide. You're gonna be like, I'm kind of vibing with these two. You're gonna swatch them in your hand. Obviously, if you do it on your face, way better. How do I wear my foundation? Sometimes I tend to say light coverage on me, but it's like, I like a fuller, I like a medium to full coverage that looks natural. That's what I like. So I can't swatch this sheer. I have to swatch it as if I was applying it on myself. And then you need to wait for it to dry down. So as this is drying down and I'm like experience, experiencing what it, it looks like, you have to imagine what the color looks like this part of the face because that always is gonna carry the most intensity because it's literally the forward facing part. It's the center. Most coverage is built. So I know that I underpaint with my bronzer and my contour. So I already have a dark base to begin with. I know that I add a ton of bronzer and I love blush and I use a brighter concealer. So I need something that's a little bit like this on my skin tone. If I went in with this, I would just look too dark. Too much yellow gold in this, I need something like this. What else do I wanna add to this story? There's some things to keep in mind when you're picking out a formula or foundation. In my experience, I feel like I've only had trouble matching maybe one or two people, and I say that with full confidence. I think one of the biggest things when you're picking the color is there are so many different ways to pick a foundation. I'm gonna do a separate video on formula too. The formula you pick can kind of affect the color as well and impact the shade choice. And an example of this would be Studio Fix powder just on the skin can look really flat because it's not marrying with the skin because powder 
needs a little bit of assistance sometimes. Sometimes, um, so hydrating it with Fix Plus melts it into the skin a little bit more, and you get a better color read from it. So if you just swatch dry back of the hand, dry powder, you could hate something. But if you sprayed it with Fix Plus, it's going to look a lot softer. It's going to look more accurate to what it would look like on the face. And one of the like key things that can happen is when you pick the wrong undertone because it's opposite to what it's sitting on, it stands out more. So if you put something on, you're like, whoa, that looks like if I put an NW on, I would either look so incredibly fair or I would look Oompa Loompa because the two color, the undertone just doesn't sit well on my skin. Something else I've in my experience is you can have golden yellow olive undertone and have redness in your face. Just because you have the redness does not mean that you have a red skin. Because the beauty of makeup is it's almost the equivalent of that first story with the hyperpigmentation. If you have a golden undertone and you put gold, golden yellow will counteract redness in the skin. So that will be a faster, more even coverage, potentially not even using concealer because you can change your brush size to help with coverage. That is a win. If you went with the red, and you put an NW on top of that, kind of working with the redness, but you've kind of covered the natural undertone. So the color's gonna be a little bit off. You're gonna feel like you need to do more work to get to where you need to be versus sticking with that undertone that you see, not the redness in the center. Undertone itself will counteract, like color correct that for you. That's why color correctors are not 100% necessary in the red area. You don't need to put a green color corrector down on redness all the time. Another kind of supporting factor to that is red sits on the warm side, yellow sits on the cool side, opposite each other when you cover them. When they're layered, they cover each other. So that's why yellow is cool, red is warm. You have redness in your skin, you put that golden color on top of it, it's going to neutralize it without having to use a green color corrector. Green is part of that yellow golden olive category, which is why it sits so well on top of it. I do not want to overwhelm you guys with info. Very exciting, but my makeup lessons, both virtual and in-person, and then in-person makeup services are open. You can book me at bookmissmegan at gmail.com. I'll have everything in the description box down below. So if you would like a one-on-one, -on -one, please reach out. I hope that you guys are absorbing as much info as you can and it's making navigating the makeup world easier for you if you haven't already make sure you subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a post follow me on instagram and tiktok at miss maggie robinson and until then i'll see you next time bye don't look at my finger